Hi there. Ooh. Might have zoomed in too much there, bear with me. Right, I shall now take my seat. So, hello, Moira McDonald. Thanks very much for coming back. You glutton for punishment, you. Um, today I embark on... <laughs> move the bit of lace that's still on my desk from the other day. Uh, today I embark on the cover for the journal I will be making. Um, and I am very happy to have you alongside me uh, and watch me make it. I, I really... I, I, I really hate videos that are just all measurement, measurement, measurement because it's irrelevant in your case um, but I'll just run through quickly what I've done here I am making this journal from a paper bag um, it's it's kind of like those lunch sacks I, I don't know it's not the thickest material in the world so I don't know if this is quite like the, the lunch bags that you do get in the States but I, when I was buying it uh, on the internet. Um, I assume this is what it was. It certainly folds over at the bottom. Now I've added a piece of fabric here because um, it's paper basically and I'm going to give it a card uh, cover um, but it will need some sort of strengthening up so that when I sew in the signature it, uh, it has something to grab onto because obviously if it's just paper it's, it's not going to hold. It'll just rip through it. Um, there's every possibility that after I put the covers on, I will look for a piece of uh, lace to cover over as well, uh, at least part of the front. So anyway, folded over my bag. The bag now will be uh, six across at the front and six across at the back, six and three quarter inches down. On the inside, it's going to be six inches across here. In this wee fold, I'm putting in a piece that's roughly three and three quarter inches, and this is going to be covered by a piece that is four inches across by six and three quarters. Um, I've thought about once I glue it, uh, maybe sewing it, but to be honest, I don't think I will. I think I'll just leave it with uh, putting the the card on, and that that'll be enough because I'm going to add just some lace fabric or a doily or something to it anyway just to give it extra strength. Got my trusty fabric tack to glue this quite quickly and uh, the one thing I would say, I, I can't even remember who it was, but one of, one of the comments I got the other day had pointed out to me that it says on the back of fabric tack that you can um, thin it down. So I had a wee look at that this morning and yes you can if you add acetone to it. And I thought to myself, well, acetone is a nail varnish remover and I have a bottle of nail varnish remover, albeit a I never wear nail varnish, I can't even, I think I bought it to, to get uh, some label off or something, you know how it's, it's really quite good at removing sticky glue. Um, but it stinks to high heaven. Anyway, the gist of it is, I went up to the bathroom cabinet to have a look at the old bottle of nail varnish remover, uh, only to discover that I had bought acetone-free nail varnish remover. But I figured that it's maybe not so much the acetone as whatever the consistency is of nail varnish remover. So I've added a wee bit anyway, uh, just in the off chance that we're okay. And so far, it hasn't um, it hasn't exploded so in that respect I think we're probably perfectly safe in terms of whether or not it's got acetone on it or it doesn't whatever's in nail varnish remover clearly works in the same way when it comes to thinning this down now having said that please do not rush out and buy um, non-acetone nail varnish remover to thin your um, fabric tack if you want to. If you want to find, uh, thin it, stick with the instructions. So it's one of these don't do as I do, do as I say situations. And in life there are many of those. Just me. Right. Oh, there it goes. Crime spree up the road. Um. Actually, I think that was an ambulance. Uh, so, anyway, 
Right, so that's that. And I'll just hold it for a minute to make sure it's stuck down. And then we'll do the, the next bit, which is the inside cover. I just glued the bit of fabric uh, that's in the spine there with Fabri-Tac again. Um, it'll, it'll hold it enough to enable me to stick this on top. And then when we get to do the signatures, oh sorry, the signature, because I'm, it's it's going to be a one signature book. I do like one signature because as I've said before, I'm not, I, I really have tremendous bother. And I know, um, I watched Tracy Fox doing a video recently uh, where she had it all measured up with, um, you know, a bit of, nice bit of card and wee holes and lines in the right place and I, and I I'm sorry, I just, I, I fall apart when I have to measure anything. I, I, I think it's just, um, it's not stupidity, it's just complete and utter lack of interest, <laughs> if I'm being honest. I just, I'm the world's worst and I know it, I, I just can't, can't bear uh, measuring stuff. Now, this one's going to be an awkward one because I need to try and get it in here without sticking it to the other bit of the bag. This will act ultimately as I can inside pocket, I think, once I'm done. This morning I, I went on the hunt, I, had a, I knew I had a book that uh, was full of kids stories and that it was really quite a nice book. In fact, I knew the book was called Nice Stories and I wanted to find it because for the life of me I couldn't remember where I'd put it. Uh, and there are only really two or three hidey holes I've got for books, so I knew it had to be in one of them. And I searched and found it eventually. Um, and I sat outside just when I came back from walking the dogs um, and had a wee cup of tea and I thought I'll read a wee story and see what it's like. I was sitting reading it and it's... Did I mention in Queen Victoria? And I thought, when, when was this book written? Um, and I mean, it did, don't get me wrong, it did look really old fashioned. So I had a look and it was, it was published in 1904. Uh, Victoria died in 1901. So... Uh, you know, I mean, obviously the stories that are in it must have been written around the turn of the century. Um, and, there, you know, there's one about the Boer War. I don't even know where the Boer War was. I think it was in Africa somewhere. But, um, I, uh, sorry, I didn't do history at school, so, you know, it's not my, not my forte. Uh, but it was, um, and it's a strange wee book. And I don't know how much of it I'll be able to use, to be fair. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. I'll need to see how the pages go and have a wee think about things and how I would use them. Now, Right, that's that. So that's that's basically uh, my my intention is to hold that down in some way. Now I could, if I like sewing, sew around it. Um, but I just don't know if I like sewing enough because I know I don't. I know I don't like sewing. If you know what I mean. Uh, but oh. I'll have a think about it. What I'm going to do in the meantime is I'm going to see if I can find a piece of lace um, or a doily of some description to just decorate across the front of the book. So I shall pause my camera, have a wee shifty through my lace pile and 
be back. And I'm back. Right, so I found a wee doily. And I'm going to use my wee doily. It's going to hang over slightly top and bottom, but not the end of the world. And I'm going to stick it uh, straddling the front and back. So, I never quite know the best way of doing this, whether it's to put the Fabri-Tac on the doily or put it on the book. Um, we'll go with putting it on the doily. Let's see how it goes. I don't want to overdo the amount I use because um, it is a lacy doily and as soon as my finger goes on it I'm going to have a fabric tack everywhere. So I was, um, I'm still having bother with my Google by the way. I haven't heard back from them yet as regards my fluctuating, uh, what do you call it, fluctuating subscriber amount. Uh, there clearly is a bit of an issue and it may well be that this is quite standard but it's a wee bit of a nuisance when you're doing, you know, you've made a conscious decision to do a, a giveaway and you're not getting all your comments um, so you don't know if you're responding to everybody or if you're only responding to certain people. It's, it's just really, really annoying. Um, so we'll just need to hope that everything's okay. I think if I actually go on to the, the laptop, which I will do before uh, I get to Friday when I'm going to do the drawing, and at that point I shall uh, make sure I've seen all the names and the the person that I know has a bit of an issue with Google as well who can't leave comments but I'll be on that and I'll include her in it so everything should be okay in that respect right there we go that's for Doyle See, the thing is, if I do sew around it, the good thing is it immediately takes care of making this into a pocket without me having to do anything else. Um, I just really worry that this is going to be kind of thick. I mean, it shouldn't be, it sh should be fine, but you can never be too sure. What we don't want to do is break the needle on Fabri-Tac glue. I don't know exactly how solid Fabri-Tac is. That in itself could probably kill my needle. Do you know what? I don't think I'll bother. I think I'll just stick that down and keep it as a pocket. Just stick with glue at the moment. There will be some sewing in the the actual book itself, you know, the pages. Be it either by tags or On the glue. All the glue is all losing out the side. Let's hold that down until it seals. Every time I use Fabri Tac, I get to play the game of picking it off my fingers. Sorry, fingers. I think that's us. 
Right, so there's the basic cover done. Um, that was a wee bit easier than I thought it was going to be actually. Because I'd anticipated all sorts of problems. So, that's it for today I think. Uh, I made another couple of tags this morning. I'll just show you them briefly. Um, I've got a, a book that's, um, I think it's a, a, you know, it describes it as kids encyclopedia or whatever. And what I did was I, the bits of the time cards that I had left from the other ones that I cut up yesterday, I've just used them, um, covered them with paper from this particular blue phased paper pack. Um, added a bit of book page here, cut out a couple of the wee definitions. This is for could. Betty could jump over the log. Betty was able to jump over the log. Uh, Betty's just a wee show off, obviously. She looks as if she's going to trip, mind you, because that, that foot's not coming up high enough to get over that log. So I would look out, Betty. You're in mortal danger there. Uh, I just cut her out, uh, labelled her, what am I saying, matted her up in black. Uh, this one is cover. Please cover the baby with a blanket. Now the baby in the blanket. And this one was cradle. Baby sleeps in a cradle. Baby sleeps in a small bed that rocks back and forth. Baby lives in the 15th century. Because I've never seen anything like that in my life. This book was from the 1970s. Um, I'm quite sure they could have got something more apt rather than doing that because it does, it's, you know, here's medieval baby. Anyway, right, that's just my wee bugbear. Um, that's us for today. I shall tomorrow come back with hopefully some pages and we can start getting those organised. You know how that way you've got kind of, you've got the kernel of an idea of what you want to do but to think about it causes your brain immense pain. Um, that's just the way it goes, I suppose. But I'll get there. Um, so will we, as a group. And then the book will be, once everything's done, a giveaway uh, on my YouTube. So thank, uh, remember, if you've, if you've not seen the video of the Lacey Tag, it's the the most recent giveaway that's up and it'll be drawn on Friday coming, it's Monday now so we've got another couple of days so please if you haven't already seen it and commented and you're interested in uh, participating get yourself on to my YouTube and have a look at it and that's it for the time being so thanks very much for your time, I shall speak to you all again soon bye bye, see you folks, bye